Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. This has been one of my most requested videos to talk about French brand Joseph Duclos and I'm going to be focused on their bags. I'm Anisou Sagonda and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go or you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, or you're into luxury but you want to focus more on quality, under the radar brands, then my content is geared towards you. There are currently only two stores at the moment that physically stock Joseph de Claude bags a concession in Galeria Lafayette in Doha, Qatar, and the second is a standalone Joseph de Close store that's located at number 54 Rue de Faubourg Saint Honoré. The same road houses a good number of the brands I consistently talk about. Top end of the market focuses on quality, under the radar, think for example Delvaux, Moina, um, you have Moreau, which is located um, almost directly opposite Joseph de Clos at number 49. Back on the same side as Joseph de Clos, um, as you walk down, a few doors down, again on your left-hand side, you have at number 24, uh, Hermes Mothership. Keep walking down and Rue de Faubourg Saint Honoré becomes Saint Honoré. At number 368, you have Delvaux. Keep walking down just after Place Vendôme. Again, on the left-hand side, you have at number 348, Moina. All of those stores are literally within a 10 minutes walking distance of each other. Um, if you're in the area, it's very easy to go from one to the other to, to see all of them. And I'd highly recommend, if you're ever in that part of town, venture out, um, because most people go for Hermes, venture out and take a look at Joseph de Clos. Then you have Moina, Delvaux, you have Moreau you'll get a fantastic selection of some of the best bags in the market when it comes to craftsmanship and it comes to the quality. If you don't care for the hype, you'll be in absolute heaven. But coming back to Joseph de Clos, it's a brand I briefly touched on um, a few days ago when I was responding to a comment posed by one of my um, subscribers and she was asking why I didn't have a Birkin or a Kelly in my luxury wish list for 2023. And in that video, I mentioned a number of other brands that I had on my radar or would have on my radar before I considered a Birkin or a Kelly. And one of the brands was Joseph de Clos. And I just mentioned it because I wanted to whet your appetite, just get the brand into the foray. As I mentioned in that video, Joseph de Clos was first founded in 1754. And it was founded off the back of King Louis XV. At that time, he signed the letter of patents in Versailles. And it brought together um, some of the best artisans in the country at that time. Highly skilled, adept at working with some of the finest materials um, in the world in France. And France was considered um, a, a huge force when it came to craftsmanship and the quality of the leathers being produced. And during that time, the king awarded a royal warrant to Joseph de Clos. But at that time, they didn't trade as uh, Joseph de Clos eponymously. They were known as Manufacture Royale de Lecteur after they had been uh, awarded a royal warrant. That is how they traded going forward. And at that time when they traded, they traded from 1754 until 1850. And they were focused um, on producing some of the most exquisite leathers. They were a tannery that were very well known and respected and their leathers were used for furniture, wall coverings um, and the army also bought um, leather from them to produce footwear and also clothing items like um, jerkins for the army. Um, traded as I mentioned until 1850 at which point the brand closed down. Fast forward to now 2021 uh, and in September last year they reopened um, in Paris at 54 uh, Rue de Faubourg Saint Honoré. 54 is also the same as the 54, um, the year that they were first founded, 1754. And the brand very much harks back to its heritage. There's a lot of reference. Um, pretty much every product they make has some link to the brand's heritage. 
54 Rue, uh, Rue de Faubourg Saint Honoré, and then 1754, that the, the year that the brand was first founded. So when they opened in 2021, it was eponymously named uh, Joseph de Clos, and the brand was revived by a French businessman, Frank Dehaene. And he saw a phenomenal business opportunity to revive a brand um, that in its heyday was very well known and highly regarded for its exceptional leathers. The tannery was well known, it was famous, it was producing some of the best leathers. And it was trading at a time um, before handbags were in production. But the brand didn't have handbags to, to, to look at or consider, for example, but what the brand did, what Frank Dehaene wanted to do was just use the heritage source, inspiration, and very much play off the strong heritage it had, um, the high regard, the respect for the leathers, uh, the craftsmanship associated with the brand, and revive that and um, create handbags off the back of that. And that is what he's done. And he very strategically did it. Uh, before the brand announced it was opening um, in Paris uh, at its current location, Ramesh Nair had been creative director at Moina for about 10 years and then he resigned. And myself included, I was gobsmacked. I wasn't expecting him to leave. He was doing very well at Moina. But now the question was, where was he going to resurface? eponymously with his own brand or with another brand and then lo and behold it was announced he was going to be the creative director for Joseph de Clos. and immediately I knew the brand would be in very good hands and it made me really keen to see what he was going to do because Ramesh Nair did the same for Moina. Moina is a brand that was started in 1849, traded for a period of time then it closed down and when it reopened he came in as the creative director and he earned his stripes in the industry. He was able to bring Moina to the forefront. It's still very much a brand under the radar, but it's a brand that if you know, you know its quality. He has been able to assert the brand into a market that's heavily dominated by brands like Hermes, Chanel, Christian Dior, for example. And it, it has its pride of place as a brand under the radar, but it competes like for like with the other brands and it actually as i've said and I'm, I'm very comfortable saying this it pips hermes to the post when it comes to the quality of the craftsmanship the stitching the finish the reinforcements and so forth and the fact that he was able to revive moina so successfully he produced a, a classic beautiful selection of designs that were very well received and are doing incredibly well it seemed a no-brainer to literally poach him. I wouldn't be surprised if he was poached from Moina or at least approached and asked to come and he considered the offer, which would have been a very strong offer, to do the same at Joseph de Clos as he did at Moina. He also joined with another top executive um, that he was with at Moina, Emmanuel Voisin. Um, so it's almost a power duo who are coming in to re replicate the magic that they performed at Moina at Joseph de Clos. It's a new brand. No one knows what they're capable of, where they're going to go, what's going to happen, but they are under very good hands. So I'm looking forward to seeing how things are going to develop. And as is, his new collection of bags have been very well received. They're beautiful. And they come into a market with a welcome addition of phenomenal quality and great craftsmanship. Joseph de Clos is within your super premium level of luxury. So that's bags that are typically priced between 3,000 and 5,000 euros. And with super premium, you're paying for absolutely everything. The prestige, the heritage, the exclusivity of the bags, the craftsmanship, the quality, the very high quality of the leathers that are used. And as I've mentioned, Joseph de Clos relies heavily on its heritage. You see a lot of the heritage of the brand coming through in the designs, the inspiration, the names and so forth um, of the different styles that they produce. There are three styles currently in production at Joseph de Clos. Diane, which is the front running style, Saint Clair and Lector. Diane and Saint Clair were fountains that supplied water to the original factory. And Lector is the town in which the factory was located. Looking specifically at the Diane, Diane comes in two style options. Um, there is the top handle bag and there are two size options. The smaller size is 20 centimeters in length and priced at 5,300 euros. And then the second uh, size, 
uh, slightly bigger is 26 centimeters in length and priced at 6,400 euros. The second style is a crossbody bag and that is 24 centimeters in length and priced at 5,000 euros. The bags are made from a beautifully soft, sumptuous, supple heritage calfskin that has been semi-vegetable dyed. It hasn't been finished, so all the original oils of uh, the skin are intact. So over time, the, uh, the, the leather will be able to develop the patina, very gently darken and develop a subtle sheen as it ages. It's a smooth calfskin, so it does mark. And people who typically buy the smooth calfskin are buying it because they want to see the marks, the scuffs as the bag ages over time. Inside of the bag is lined using goatskin. And I've noticed that a lot of the top end brands, Hermes, Joseph Duclos, um, a couple of the custom focused brands, they all use goatskin on the inside to line their bags. And that's because it's resistant, it's robust. If you spill something on it, it it'll be very easy to wipe it. Uh, you won't get any stains or any damage, uh, any real damage, of course, uh, provided you take care of the stain immediately. Coming back to the outside of the bags, on the front, there's an iconic clasp inspired by the Huntress Goddess. Base of the clasp, you pinch it in order to open it and bring up the clasp or push it down to close it. And then the side of the bag, you see a heritage feature from the time when uh, Manufacturer Royale was, the Lecton was in production. During that time, um, handbags, as I mentioned, were not in production. And Ramesh Nair sourced a lot of the inspiration for his current collection from um, the museums, military attire, um, some of the tools that were used in the original factory. And you see those heavily in the current designs. The bags during the time when uh, Manufacturer Royale was in operation, they were made entirely of fabric. They would add metal to the bags to give them structure, and hence the gilded brass plate on the side of the bag. Also customizable, you can get a message engraved on there. Whatever you'd like, provided it fits, you can get a message engraved on that. And then, of course, the crossbody comes with additional strap and you can wear the body, uh, the bag uh, crossbody or over the shoulder very comfortably. And if, I'm sure you've noticed and someone will mention the style is very similar to the Celine 16. But of course, it's uh, a much better product when it comes to the quality of the leather, the craftsmanship. All the bags are entirely hand stitched and they come in a selection of six solid, rich, regal inspired colors. There's a blue, there's a green, there's um, a red variation, there's a slate, there's a black, there's also a chestnut color. The second style is the St. Clair, and there are two style options. The first is a messenger bag. Um, the bag comes in um, a number of different color combinations, and that determines the price. They range in price from 3,900 3, euros to 4,700 euros, depending on the color. The base of the bag is made from Symphony Cowhide, uh, and that develops a beautiful patina over time. And then the flap is made from Arpeggio leather, which looks and feels like suede, and that darkens wherever you have pressure points, um, depending on how you carry the bag um, over time. Inside of the bag is lined using uh, goat skin. Each bag, typically 10 bags per color, and they're numbered. Once they're gone, they're gone. But all of Joseph de Clos bags are numbered, and they also have the name of the artisan written within the bag. So you're very much buying into the exclusivity when it comes to Joseph de Clos. You're not going to ever have a bag that um, tens or hundreds of people are ever going to carry. And there's also palladium hardware on the bag. The other variation of the Claire is a pouch bag. Um, it's one solid piece of cowhide that's used to make the bag. There aren't any seams. And the inside is lined using goat's calfskin and priced at about 2,700 euros. The third style is Lector, which is the totes. And there are two sizes. The first is, um, it's a slimmer bag. So it's 28 centimeters in length, 38 and a half centimeters in height. And then the slightly bigger version is 38 centimeters in length and 30 centimeters in height. Both are used, uh, both are made using Adagio bull calf skin. Um, it's soft and fluffy looking. And uh, the, the straps, 
You also have the, the trimming, the pockets, for example, are made using Sonate uh, leather. Inside of the bag is unlined and it comes with uh, in four different color options. The smaller size, the slimmer one, is priced at 2,350 euros. And the slightly bigger size is priced at 2,600 euros. That is Joseph Duclos uh, bags in a nutshell. A carefully, well-considered, heritage-inspired um, selection style of bags beautifully produced by Ramesh Nair. As always, if you have any other questions about the styles, the brand, let me know in the comments down below. But this is a superb brand, uh, bringing in a fantastic selection of uh, alternate designs into the super premium space. A great competitor to um, Christian Dior and Bottega Veneta that nobody else will know about, but it's packing a mighty quality punch and dare I say better than both of those two brands. As always, thank you for watching my content. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon.